The new Google Pixel lineup has landed. But instead of a normal hands-on or first impressions, how about we do something a little different this time around? For Mr. Mobile's next first, in a year that seems to be full of them, I've been invited to sit down with Rick Osterloh, Google's SVP of Devices and Services. In other words, the single best person to ask about what's new and what's coming for the Pixel. Let's jump in. Rick Osterloh. Senior Vice President, Google Devices and Services. Get that right. right. That's Thanks right. Great to see you. Appreciate Thanks for coming. I was thinking about this on the way in. Ever since the Pixel 6, uh -huh. it kind of feels like Google's Pixel division has gotten its legs under it. You once said in an interview with The Verge, we hope to be selling products in high volumes in five years. And that was six years ago. Uh huh. Uh huh. Are the volumes where you want them to be today? Well, I mean, I think they're a lot better than where they were before and we're growing. So that's been terrific. There's some research out that shows, you know, our market share has grown a lot in, in, mar in a lot of markets. Yeah. Um, US, we've done quite well. Everyone else is kind of staying the same or down a little bit. We've grown a lot. In Japan, you know, I saw some research that said we were close to maybe number two it's in the market. 8% like market share in Japan? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I haven't counted them all up myself, but that's right. what the research shows. Yeah. But we're definitely getting a lot of traction. and. I think people are taking notice of the approach. I, I think you're right on about Pixel 6. That was like a pivot point for us. Yeah. It was the first time we introduced uh, Tensor. Before we get into the chip, I want to talk about, there have been a few kind of industry-wide trends on the casings, mm -hmm. I've noticed, of all phones, not just uh -huh, Pixel. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you launched in 2016 with this really blue, this really vibrant color, and many other manufacturers are doing these standout colors. But these days, almost everybody has walked everything back and say, you know, we don't want highly saturated colors, they're much more muted. Is that a response to what people are actually asking for because everyone's gonna put a case on phones? Or is it something that, is it just following fashion trends or something else I don't understand? Very yeah, much? I mean, our, we have a terrific design team and I, I mean, yeah. I love the designs of our phones. The, yours, is, yours is the most colorful one. I love one. this color, yes. I love this color. Um, a new one for this year, Bay Blue. Yeah. But we over, several years have honed our ability to kind of look at market trends and figure out what's happening. We look at things like, you know, design, fashion, furniture trends. We talk right. to consumers and it's, you know, it's pretty clear preferences have changed recently. I'm not exactly sure why, but, but I, that's why you're seeing us introduce these kinds of the colors. Wrath of minimalism. We have to, to <laughs> it scourge, could be. we have to it eliminate it. The first time I saw you on stage was at a Moto X launch. And that was 10 years yep, ago. That was a long time ago. You were the president of Motorola. <laughs> yeah. Do you think we'll ever see a return to a time when you have this endless customization like we did back then? Yeah, on the Moto X, you could put a leather back on it. You could yeah, put a wooden yeah, back on it. You could, yeah. you could go crazy. You know, or do you think it's just over? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it was really hard to do, but it was really cool. I mean, I think, I think those couple of years, we really explored a bunch of innovation approaches. And a lot of it, you know, a lot of our team worked at Motorola and and learned a lot about innovation during that period of time. Yeah. But customization is extremely hard. And I think, yes. you know, the, the, our main focus now is obviously in where computing trends are shifting. I think we're in the middle of probably the biggest shift in computing ever with this, with this AI transition. So 100%. we're really focused on that right now. Let's get into that. So you Tensor sure. G3, it's, it's new. Yep. You're very proud of it. It's, yep. uh, smartphone nerds like me get into debates about, well, why didn't <laughs> you use Qualcomm? And sure, yeah, yeah, all yeah. This stuff. But, at the end of the day, you're, you're trying to sell pixels to normal people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What are three features the Pixel can do that other phones can't, but specifically because it has the G3? G3 in there? Yeah, all the features we do in photography lend themselves to uh, all the capabilities in G3. And, you know, like the photography example you saw with Best Take. That's probably our newest, coolest example. Where you can change out people's faces if somebody's blinking, if somebody's Exactly, like you take several else. photos and then within those photos you can pick the best face of the photos right. you took and That's you have like the perfect group shot that you intended to take. You couldn't do that if you weren't building your own chip. Right, this would be really difficult if not impossible to do. Got it. So then, you know, that's one great example, but in general, computational photography allows us to take advantage of all the capabilities of the chip. Sure. And that's been our, I mean, you know, our focus from day one has been improving and pushing the edge on photography. And oh, I think it's what, we're, what we kind of stand for in many ways. So we, we wanted to make sure we had no limits there. So that was one reason. Got it. I'd say another one that we also talked about today is we wanted to have control of our destiny in terms of upgrades. Mm. You know, device longevity is like super important for a million reasons. 
users want to get the most value for money. They also care about things like sustainability for sure, sure and so do we. And they're keeping their devices for longer too. They want to keep it for a long time. Yeah. And, and so by managing our own chip, we're able to also manage the software that goes with it and make sure it stays up to date. So we introduced seven years of OS support and security updates yep. and feature drops for years to come. So, so if you weren't using a Tensor G3, if you weren't using your own chip, you would, you would be kind of beholden to the silicon manufacturer in terms of how long you could support it? Right, that's how the, that's how the ecosystem works, yeah. is the, the SOC vendors, and in this case us, has a lot to do with how long you can support these devices. So it was very important to us, and, uh, and so we wanted to make sure we were able to do that. I'd say the third thing you asked for three. I did. Third and last one <laughs> is uh, we've been able to really advance our speech capabilities on the device too. Yes. And so we do all of our speech processing locally, and that's because of Tensor G3. Which makes it faster. It Which makes it faster. It, do, it doesn't have to go to the cloud. It's you know it's just more responsive for the user. You can even use it offline. Right. So this is this enables all sorts of features like the call screening right. uh, capabilities, like New uh, dictation, like all the stuff in Gboard. Nerdy follow-up question to that. I know a lot of those capabilities were on G2. Um, there were some thermal issues. The Pixel 7 or mine or a lot mm -hmm. of review units. They kind of ran hot. I tried to do a Google Photos backup once. It was too hot to do. You know. Have those been an area of focus for G3 for improvements? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think all, all SOCs will get warm if you use it a sure. lot. And, sure. and some things like you know, taking um, high resolution videos or, or auto navigation, they use a lot of the system. Right. So, so because it's using a lot of the system, they can certainly get warmer, as you've seen with recent product launches. Yeah. Uh, but we've been really focused on this area though. So, and we think we have big improvements in G3 in this domain. So. Uh, look out for that. It'll be something I'm sure you look at in your reviews. I, I certainly will, yes. Um, some folks might have expected, this is a selfish question. Uh-huh. Sorry, <laughs> not sorry. Some folks might have expected a foldable flip to be announced foldable at this flip. event. Oh, yes. To kind of, you know, be a, be a partner to the fold yeah, launched yeah, at I.O. Yeah. Is that an area that Google is interested in exploring, a different uh, types of foldable? I mean, we, you know, we, we didn't introduce one today. No, we did not. Uh, we've been focused on fold. And, and of course our Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro. You know, we've been really focused on trying to make that big fold work well. Yes. And, and that's, that's just so important to us. I think, I think the high-end user is really excited about the possibility of a foldable phone. And so um, we're Can focused confirm. in that area right now. And they're yeah. very hard to make. <laughs> so, so yes. you know, making sure we stay focused to try to perfect the products is, is what we've been doing. One thing I hear over and over again from my audience is that a lot of them don't live in the US but they still want to buy a Pixel, or they still want to buy a Pixel and be able to use Pixel features. Why isn't the Pixel available in more countries? Well, uh, it's a good question, and we are starting to expand. Um, so we you know, currently are, are only in a handful of countries, but we're expanding to more and more. We'll be throughout Europe uh, before long, and you know, that's going to be a continued focus of ours. We're very new to the hardware game. Uh, what, what, versus other people, yeah. You six, know, this six, is our. This years? is. Yeah. It's been seven years since our very first launch, yeah. um, but we're growing our capabilities. You know, I think it takes a long time to build the technology platform and the products, and now we're really building out our supply chain and our, our sales and marketing capabilities. So the intention is to do that. It's not going to be. Yes, uh, our intention is to. It's not going to be a boutique phone shop right. forever. Our okay. intention is definitely to expand. Got it. Uh, let's talk about Pixel Watch Two briefly. We're running a little Great. short on time. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are speculating because the sensors on the back are totally revamped. Yes, here. they are. They are. Is this where a lot of that Fitbit expertise finally went? You guys acquired Fitbit a number of years ago. It's been a while yeah. since we've heard about where that expertise yep. has gone. Yep. Is that basically the, the spirit of Fitbit? A hundred percent. You know, the acquisition closed a couple of years ago, and it took a while to get everything integrated. These things take time. Yeah. But. Fitbit has great expertise. Our team just has this awesome expertise on sensor and, and sensor algorithm and interpretation. Yeah. And so we redesigned the sensor on Pixel Watch 2. Uh, the original Pixel Watch was started before the acquisition closed. So uh, now we were able to take full advantage of the expertise of our Fitbit team. And uh, we've also been able to change how a lot of the system works, also based on their expertise about doing low power tracking and sensing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so like one of my favorite secret features that like we didn't even talk about today because there's so much to talk about is on the watch face it's always on now and you still get a full days of battery life but you it also has almost real-time heart rate so you can literally see your heart rate 
updated as you're sitting in here. real time. Yeah, so yeah. It's, like a, it's like one of a million cool features, right. but that's one of the things I love personally. And then, it, then of course, we've really had the time now to deeply integrate Fitbit. And all the, all the features that they built over years are now fully on this device. Well, what's interesting though, is you've been able to increase its feature set, and yet, on this device, you went the opposite direction in terms of silicon. You're using a Qualcomm platform yes, yeah. on this one. What, why? What, well, they make a great product. And so we wanted to we wanted to use what was the best. Okay. And so we've got their silicon running on here, and you've seen huge improvements in power performance on it. Sure. And uh, so we're very excited about it. Another thing, one thing I was really hoping for, I think, was the Pixel Watch is great. Mm -hmm. It's a good size for a lot of wrists. It is true. Yeah. Kind of wanted a bigger option. Uh huh. It's bigger. Uh -huh. Lets you put a yeah. bigger battery in there, so it can last longer, and also works better on some wrists. Is there hope for a larger Pixel Watch? Uh, I think point? that's definitely something we'll be looking at in the future. Um, this year, we've, we've kept it to the same size. Yeah. So the form is pretty similar. We've changed some of the material, some of the design, but it's subtle. Right. Uh, the big change is in the sensor and the, and the features. There's, there's a huge range of features. And then the overall performance. Let's talk about the ecosystem real quick. We, sure. We've seen you know, Apple, most notably, has leaned so heavily into that ecosystem advantage to sell more mobile tech. Is the Pixel family generating the kind of network effect that you hoped it would? It definitely is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I people think our, buying we built because it buds, because people like asked for, where's a watch, where's the buds? Yeah. And we also see clearly in our data that people that buy multiple of these devices have a better user experience and they're happy overall with their Pixel experience. Because it does, I mean, it does make it better. It's just more powerful. Um, just on the ecosystem, I know we're running out of time here. Uh, the Google Assistant, is, is really critical to the value proposition of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It hasn't had a great couple years. Well, it hasn't had a great last year at least. And I was really hoping we'd see a new announcement on stage today, and we did. Bard with Assistant, or Assistant uh -huh. with Bard. Yep, yep. Do you think, I mean, is that, is that gonna be the next chapter of the Assistant that's gonna solve a lot of the issues that people are seeing with it today? For it's sure, I mean, I think experience. Google Assistant is deployed in a lot of places. The next stage is, is like very clearly going to be based on LLMs and these large language models, these foundation models that are really powerful. And we have an awesome research team, Google DeepMind, that's driving forward with big advances in AI. We'll be able to take those models and make Google Assistant even more powerful. And will that assistant functionality improvement come to like Nest devices as well, or do you need on-device silicon to? I, I mean, I'm sure eventually it will. It's really focused on mobile at, to start, because yeah. that's where like so much usage happens. And yeah, so, but, but you know, the assistant is just gonna advance across the board in so many areas. I asked my audience what they'd ask you. Uh-huh. Many of them said, look, Google releases tons of really cool features, really cool devices, but I have a hard time trusting them. Because uh -huh, they uh -huh. kill a lot of cool devices and services too. Is that something Google internally is aware of? Absolutely. Working on that perception problem. Yeah, of, I mean, and I trust them to support what I love. It's something we're very aware of, and of you know, one of the challenges of being a big innovator like Google is we try a lot of things. Yeah. And that's why you see some enormous advancements in the things we do. Um, we are very focused, though, on Pixel. I mean, we've been working on this for seven years. We just announced we're going to offer seven years of software support. I think you yeah. can have a lot of confidence that these products are going to be around for a long time, and they're going to do, continue to advance and do awesome things. And, you know, it's really focused around bringing AI innovations to users. So I hope so. If somebody's on the fence right now, last question. They're, they've got a Pixel in one hand and an iPhone in the other. What's the one reason you'd point to to tell them get the Pixel? Um, something we haven't talked about yet. You probably use YouTube. You probably use Google Search. You probably use Gmail. You already use Google. Mm -hmm. If you want the best place to use all your Google products, it's going to be on a Pixel. And in addition to all the AI we just announced, all the cool photography stuff, all the speech updates, you're going to get a look at where the future of computing is going. And I think Google is the leader in that domain. So. We'd love for you to try it. Come on, come aboard, <laughs> come aboard. It's a good answer. I think my, <laughs> mine is now playing because I want to know what this song is. Really. I love but, that. Yeah, no, it's but your answer is cool. better probably. Thank you. Which is why I'm, yeah, why you're answering. <laughs> Rick Osterlo, thank you for Great the time. Great to see you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you again soon. You Congratulations. too. Thank you. Hey, upon reflection, 
yeah, there are a few things I'd have done differently in my first on-camera interview. Uh, I'd have pressed Rick a little harder on that question about thermals, or on the Qualcomm Snapdragon issue, maybe spent another minute on foldables if I had the time. Let me tell you, it's amazing how much you only see in retrospect when you're doing something for the first time. I was almost yelling at myself during this edit. Nonetheless, I know I came away with a clearer understanding of Google's intentions for the future, at least for its own hardware, and I hope that's true for you, too. I also hope Rick was right that Google truly understands how big an issue that trust factor is with regard to abandoning its own devices and services, but as always, only time will tell about that. Speaking of time, it's disclosure time. This video was produced at the Pixel Press event in New York City and shot by an excellent camera crew provided by Google. I also sent Google a general outline of my questions beforehand, but that was just so Rick could prepare. My questions did not need to be approved before I asked, and the person editing this interview was me. So Google had no copy approval or editorial input, nor did it provide compensation for this video beyond paying for the Uber to get there. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this little sit down and whether you'd like to see more of them. Till next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.